Hello, I'm Bev Mayo and welcome back to my studio. This is the final video in the series to make this cutting mat bag. So here are all the pieces that I made in videos one and two. So I have the side panels, the handles and the top sections. In preparation for putting the bag together, I've trimmed back the side panels and just basted round the edges and this will make it easier to put the bag together. I've also basted the top line of the border section, so I've basted along the top, I've opened it out and basted along the bottom section. First thing I need to do is to base the handle in place on the top border section to make it easy again to sew together. So I'm going to open up the top border section, take the handle and the side which has got the join, this is the wrong side so it's going to go onto the top border section, line it up and I'm lining it up with the second square in. It should be around about the same size as the squares. The handle was two inches wide and the square should be about two inches wide as well. I'm going to bring the handle round and again the side which has got the join is underneath and I'm going to pin that in place and then I'm going to baste it again so the sewing machine on the longest stitch length that it will do, I'm going to use the walking foot because I've got layers and a, a thread which I can see easily to take out when I've finished. So it's going to look like this piece. So you can see I've basted around the handle and it's not going to move, it's going to stay in place whilst I stitch the bag together. Now that I've basted the handles in place, I'm going to add the lining to the back part, so this is going to be the inside of the top border. So I'm going to attach the lining to this section. I've cut my lining to the same size as the panels of the bag, because this is where it's going to be sitting inside. So it's the same size as the panels. I've chosen a calico because I know that it's durable and it's going to give a lot of wear. I don't need to have a pretty pattern inside the bag. So I'm going to take my lining and the top border section and the right side of my top border section to the lining and just pin that in place and I'm going to stitch that with a quarter of an inch seam. And I'll do that on the other side as well. So I'm going to attach the lining to the top border sections. Now that I've attached the lining to the inside of the top border section, it's time to actually join the top border to the front of the bag. So right sides together, pin in place and again using the walking foot because we're going to be going through layers and I'm going to give myself a generous seam on this one because of the handles. Pin this in place Having the handles basted means that they're not going to move when I stitch this seam So that's how it's going to look. Now that I've stitched the panels together, so I've got the front section, the top border, back and the inside and the lining together, it's time to sew both of the pieces together. So I've got the two sides of the bag. I've just released the basting at the top section to allow me to flatten it out and sew across that seam. So right sides together, and I want to make sure I keep the handles out of the way. I'm going to match up that top seam. And pin it. And then I can match up the side seams. 
And I'm going to open those out because there's quite a lot of bulk at that point. So I'm going to open it out to stitch that seam. I'm going to pin all the way around and sew all the way around the bag. Now the section I'm going to leave open, I'm just going to leave the bottom of the bag lining, I'm not going to stitch that at all and that will allow me to turn the bag to the right side. The bag is now nearly complete, I've sewn it together, I've clipped the bottom corners and it's just a case of turning it through the opening that I left in the lining. So I'm just going to pull it through and push the bottom corners out. Now I'm not going to give it a gusset because it's for a cutting mat so I want the bag to lie quite flat in that corner. And push that through. Open it up. It's starting to look good. Now the lining, I'm just going to turn it back on itself, pin it in place and I'm going to seam it close to the fold. So I've now stitched the bottom of the lining and I can push it into the inside of the bag and smooth it out on the inside. It's rather like making a duvet. Right, so the top, bag a shake. Now the bag is complete apart from a bit of top stitching. So I'm going to top stitch along the centre of the borderline. I'm not going to give any top stitching at the top of the edge. I think that's going to be enough in the centre. And I'm going to put a line of top stitching where the panel, the log cabin panel and the border section meet. I'm also going to top stitch around the handle and that will give me extra strength. The handle then just won't be held at this point. It's going to be held all along that section. I've now completed all the top stitching, so I've top stitched the handles so they're secure and held in place and I've added the top stitching around the border sections, so the bag is now complete. I hope you've enjoyed this project and hope you join me on my future ones. Bye bye.